gut check, Dan, how would you define what class is a graphics card is high end? If we're just being real about it, it's does it deliver an appreciable performance gain over the previous gen's high end? Because like I, I did a little bit of looking around just to see because I forgot all of this. But like from NVIDIA's perspective, it it's, tends to be 600 to 700 millimeter territory. Uh, sometimes it goes all the way down to 500. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of a stickler for there isn't a defined number. Like the number one thing I would use to deduce what's high end and what's not. I remember Adore TV saying this actually in a video many years ago is, and I think this is the most clear cut and fair way to do it. What's up top? What's up bottom? What's in the middle? Like, and he used this to point out like when you're saying you're like whatever is high end, he's like, hmm, let's see. It goes to you. 102, I believe it was for Turing, 104, 106, 117. What's in the middle? Guess what? 104 isn't that high, you know, isn't that high end. And 106 is certain the 2070 is certainly not a high end card. It is mid range at best. And so I think that's the only clear cut way to put it is what's at the top of the stack, what's at the bottom and in the middle, and how does that compete with the competition? Because ultimately, Turing was 12 nanometer and Radeon 7 was 7 nanometer. So you would say, oh, but how can NVIDIA even be high end if they're a node behind? Yes, but their die was so huge (laughs) that the 2080 was the same performance as the Radeon 7 with added ray tracing support. So I don't think you could do one or the other. It's just when we look at the lineup right now, like transitioning out of talking about Blackwell, this is why people I do think deserve to be pissed off is you have this insane 750 or whatever it is millimeter squared rtx 5090 at the top okay well going all the way down to like 380 millimeter squared you're going to half the die size and they're calling the 5080 high end that's really kind of an upper mid-range lower high-end card at best and you go down to the 5070 that i think is like 260 something millimeter squared so you're again now we're at like a third the die size of the actual top end die. And that is why the 5070 is not high end. At best, it's mid range. I don't know. Just from like a vibe check perspective, that is kind of what this generation feels like is everything is ha- <laughs> it feels like it's a full level below what they're naming it. Like the 5070, I guess, could maybe be a 5060 Ti. But this generation is just super off. And it's because top to bottom of the stack, they're just not delivering a performance increase over or worth noting <laughs> uh, performance increase at really any of the levels they're trying to sell anything at. Yeah. So again, there's no perfect way to say what the die size is. I mean, Pascal's die sizes were smaller than usual for high end, at least at first. But it was a very cutting edge node after we were stuck on 28 nanometer for a very long time. And I guess to your point, Dan, you're like, well, does the high end have a huge uplift over the previous high end? If it does, you can still probably call it high end. But then on top of that, it's like, well, ultimately, you know, they had 102 and the 1080 was 104 and then 106 and I believe 107. So it was like upper mid range to lower high end is what you should call the 1080, even if they're charging $800 for it. Whatever there, I think the naming at a certain point mostly comes down to marketing. In video, what you're you've done in effect is uh, now people are comparing the fifty seventy a lot of the time to something like the forty seventy super at best. <laughs> when I think on an average generational uplift, what they would want the comparison to be would be to the forty seventy Ti, or if things are going really well, even like the forty eighty. Again, that is the one thing that gives me solace about this generation too. Is just like. It does seem like people are sniffing out the bullshit. Quick Jumper writes in, he says, AMD moves towards UDNA as a unified architecture to replace both RDNA and CDNA. Could their current focus market strategy of targeting specific segments rather than competing across all tiers become their standard approach in both consumer and data center markets? Would concentrating on mid to high end products while avoiding the ultra high end segment allow AMD to better optimize their unified architecture with limited resources. So I guess you're really asking two different questions here, Quick Jumper. Number one, yes, at least for the foreseeable future, wouldn't you agree, Dan? If they move to this unified architecture approach, yeah, that's not going to be a one-off. They're going to keep doing that for a while. Oh, yeah, sure. It makes sense. Saves money. (laughs) But on top of that, he brings up an interesting point. Will they also still only focus on mid-range for both hot AI and gaming? 
I don't think so. I just don't. I doubt it. I mean, not unless they absolutely had to. The MI300, like there's notes here from Carbon Cry that says massive chips like the MI300X are making them tons of money right now. Nah, they'll go to high end. Yeah, as far as data center goes, you need to sell something that will make money at the correct amount of space that it occupies. So at a cer- to a certain extent, they have to try to go for the throne all the time, even if they don't reach it. Uh, but with gaming, I-, I don't think there's a huge departure from what we've seen AMD really do over the entire time we've you and I have been into PC gaming hardware. They go for the top when they think they can, and they put out a mid-range card when they think that's the most opportune thing to put out. And, and if they don't think they can like have a convincing high-end uh, offering. That's just what they always do. So I don't think they're going to become a mid-range gaming card company for forever because one generation or two generations or three generations even where they just offer have mid-range offerings is kind of standard for AMD. This piece of content is brought to you by the Minis Forum 795S7 Mini PC. But it's really more than just a mini PC. It's more of like a micro desktop because it comes with a 7945HX Zen 4 16 core 32 thread CPU. And although it's technically a mobile CPU, this thing is unlocked to use just as much energy as a desktop class while really operating more efficiently on average. And then it also has an RTX 4060, not a mobile one, a low profile desktop one. So that in the future, if there is some low profile graphics card that you come across that you want, that's a lot better, you can actually upgrade it. What they managed to do is give you really the ability to upgrade full desktop class performance in a mini PC package. And so this thing is honestly awesome as a budget workstation. I mean, if you add up the cost of the like a $250 to $300 GPU, like a $400 plus CPU, motherboard, Wi-Fi, all this other stuff that it comes with in the package, this is cheaper than building your own desktop while getting a premiumly small form factor. So if you're interested in this product, and it is really cool, I checked it out, by the way, make sure you go to the link in the description and get it through there to support Moore's Law is Dead. Again, support Moore's Law is Dead by checking out the Minis Forum 795 S7 Mini PC that comes with a 4060 today.